Smiley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Monday, November 7th. So today we have the moon moving out of this Aries energy and moving into Taurus energy, of course, setting us up for the full moon total lunar eclipse in Taurus that will be taking place early Tuesday morning. So anytime we're moving out of the fire energy of Aries and moving into the earth energy of Taurus, we tend to get a little bit low and slow. We kind of retreat. We move within ourselves. We want our creature comforts. We want to just be cozy, stick to what is tried, tested, and true. But of course, with this eclipse energy that we're in and this full moon energy we are in, we might not be so comfortable. If you haven't downloaded your moon guide yet, I'm going to recommend you do that. If you haven't listened to the full moon eclipse astro forecast. I'm going to recommend you do that. And you will see the big picture on why it is that we're not going to be able to be as comfortable as we want to be in this Taurus energy. Now we will have the moon go into this Taurus energy very, very early on in the morning. And there are eight different aspects here today. Only three of them actually involve the moon. The moon is going to make an interaction, a positive one, lucky for us, with Saturn, the Lord of Karma. And this particular energy is definitely going to put us in an interesting situation to see where it is in our lives that we are being asked to build, where it is that we're being asked to restructure, reorganize, and actually boss up into new roles and responsibilities. Now, here's where things get interesting. If you listen to the astro forecast here for this week, you would know that we have a lot of competing energy between Venus and Mercury here this week. Venus is going to square, get into the boxing ring with Saturn. And this particular energy is going to bring on a little bit of a negative narrative. Keep in mind, we're in Scorpio season where things are extreme. Keep in mind, we are in eclipse season where things are out of our control. And keep in mind that we're in a full moon window where things get fully illuminated and we feel things a lot more intensely than we would under a normal moon phase. The Venus and Saturn square is definitely going to bring out negative Nancy. And even more than that, it is going to isolate us from the relationships that we actually crave connection in. There is this weight. There is this aha moment on what it is that we're not currently satisfied with, what it is that we're discontent with, what it is that we are emotionally lacking. And of course, plays into this negative narrative that's going to become very loud and very, very intense. We have a lot of fears, a lot of doubts, a lot of insecurities coming up around our self-worth, around our self-confidence. And of course, this spills over into our personal relationships. We are going to have an interaction with Chiron very early after this square, this tension point, this conflict with Saturn. And this is going to highlight for us where it is that we have to dig ourselves out of this dark pit, where it is that we have to stop with the negative narrative, where it is that we have to flip the script and actually build ourselves back up in a much more positive way. Here's where things get interesting. We're going from one extreme to the next because we have Mercury interacting with Jupiter. And this particular energy is going to take us from that dark pit, that negative narrative, and throw us all the way into an overly exaggerated state of optimism, of confidence. This is definitely going to polarize our emotions, likely make us feel a little bit more crazy and give a lot more attention, a lot more focus to a topic, to a theme, to an issue than it actually deserves. Again, with Jupiter, planet of growth and expansion tends to magnify and turn the volume all the way up on whatever it is that we're thinking, whatever it is that we're feeling. With the Mercury energy being in Scorpio, the mental plane is obsessive, it is fine tuning, in on unearthing some details that will help us piece together this bigger, brighter picture and really reveal the deep, dark truth of what it is that we are feeling negative about so that we can tap into that Jupiter energy, flip the script and build our confidence, build our optimism and dig ourselves out of this mental black hole. Mercury is then going to go ahead and interact with Pluto, the great transformer, the ruler over Scorpio energy. And this particular energy, because it's a positive one, is going to help us focus, fine tune, 
especially with that negative narrative. Now we're flipping the script and we're putting that pain to work and we're turning it into power. We are turning that darkness into light. We are turning this negative ass narrative into a narrative of empowerment. And that is what Scorpio season is all about, true transformation. And that is what Pluto energy is all about, is taking the dark and turning it into light. Venus is going to go ahead and bump into Mars, her masculine counterpart. And this is a positive interaction, which is going to bring a little bit of balance back, a little bit of creative energy back, a little bit of pep in our step. We are starting to see where it is that we've gotten out of extremes, where it is that we need to find that balance back in our lives and where it is that we need to boss up, use the fuel to the fire of this negativity to inspire and create a little bit more of an encouraging narrative and excitement in order to pursue a brand new path, a brand new passion. The moon is going to semi-square Neptune just before semi-squaring Mars. So the moon, of course, our emotions, our unconscious self, semi-squaring, which is a little bit of a tension point with Neptune, who is asking us to align with our higher selves, to listen to our intuition, to dream a bigger dream, is definitely putting us in a situation where we're having a hard time seeing the forest past the trees. The semi-square is supposed to create a little bit of tension, a little bit of conflict in order for us to rise above, to rise higher of these current circumstances in our physical lives to see what it is that our intuition wants us to navigate from here. Again, many of us stuck in the circumstances of the here and now, not seeing the magic, not seeing the possibilities of the future because we're allowing the details of our here and now to dictate for us what is actually possible. This is why it's so important to let your mind wander into la la land and actually conjure up a vision and a dream that isn't confined by the details, the circumstances of the here and now. Lastly, we have this semi square with Mars. And of course, this puts a little bit of tension on us, a little bit of a conflict. And that conflict comes because we are agitated, frustrated, a little bit angered that we can't make moves and take action right now. Again, this is a time of non-action, a time of contemplation, a time of thinking about the calculated moves that we have to make, the perfect strategy that we have to take in order to actually see our dreams come to life.